and uh, I enjoyed being down there on the beach and talking to Vincent and um, so I, either way I made my goal of the five silvers that I wanted to show you that I'm gonna that I'm gonna pan fry and they are delish there's two parts of it what you do is you pan fry them right and then after you pan fry them you cut the skin off or kind of well you cut the top of the skin off near the dorsal fin and you pull the skin off after it's been cooked oh it's just delish you know i mean i've seen people eating pork skins before pork skins ain't got nothing on these um silver perch uh skins and uh that's the first part and then the meat the meat actually it's quite bony you don't have to remove the pin bones on fish they're small after you cook it you take your fork from the dorsal side and you pull the meat sometimes you can pull it off in one fell swoop you, you'll see what i cook them but it's a three minute fry on each side of these fish uh, done in some panko and either olive oil or uh, mazzola it doesn't really matter which one you use about a medium heat cook and um, and then yeah so then you pull the, the the meat off and the meat's very white very fresh i bled them all out and uh, what i do is i take a little bit of soy sauce and i just uh, dab a little soy sauce on the on the meat part of it and it is delicious and i'm going to do that with some tostitos oh that's the other thing i got to pick up at safeway i got to pick up some tostitos and then i'm going to pull by guerrero's taqueria in pacifica they make the best salsa available to me that I am aware of. I've tried all the different types of salsas at Safeway. There's one that's pretty good, but I didn't realize that Guerrero's Taqueria, you can actually buy the uh, salsa in the cup sizes. They got a little chart behind the counter that tells you, you know, let's see, I bought like, uh, I don't know, I bought about a 20 ounce cup of salsa from them last time it was about four dollars and it's just the best the right mix i mean everyone probably uses all the same ingredients tomatoes cilantro um chopped onions uh, some lime juice uh, but it's the it's the way that you mix these ingredients together and the best tasting salsa at safeway is just about at that level but they don't have enough onion in it so it's not crunchy enough Yet a lot of tomatoes, and tomatoes are kind of soggy, right? Well, not soggy, but they're kind of mushy. And you want that crunch, that fresh crunch of the onions when you're biting into your salsa. And Guerrero's does it better than, like I said, any uh, salsa that is available for me to buy from the market that I'm aware of at this point in time. These guys, these guys do it good. Like I was saying, um, <clears throat> this is the best salsa I know that's available to me. And uh, there's a couple of different ways you can get in. There's two entrances. There's one right here where you go right past the Gorilla Barbecue, which is a really popular place. I have not had the pleasure of trying any of their food yet. The one time that I did go in there, uh, <laughs> they had just run out. And I think that's the way they, they run it. They basically um, they cook a bunch of food and they sell all of it and uh, they run out and then um, and then they, they close the doors and it'd be nice to have a business like that but here's Guerrero's here right over here on the right Guerrero's Taqueria Okay, from here on in, it's pretty easy. Got our fish clean right there. <clears throat> Got our frying pan. Turn this to about number six. That seems to work pretty good. This is our panko. This is what we're going to coat the fish with. And then you just need an oil. And I like olive oil. I mentioned before that uh, stuff is good for your heart. It's better than uh, most. And when you're doing a kind of a, a light pan fry, that's all you really need. So um, it works really good and it makes a very tasty meal. <clears throat>
Okay, so let's see, 746. I got this time to a science because um, I love these kind of fish here. See the meat on those? Nice white meat. They've all been bled out, um, scaled, and heads taken off. Did cook them with the heads on, I used to, but actually get more room in the frying pan. And for five, I, I told you, it, there was um, four of these were eight inches. One was eight and a quarter. I think it was that one right there. That was the biggest one. This was the one that I had caught in the eye, and it was six and a half. And you can see how much difference there is in the six and a half to the, the eight inch uh, uh, perch. I just cleaned these fish too, so they're wet, and that helps the um, the panko here stick to the fish. That's about enough for five. If not, I just pour a little more in there. You want the oil hot enough to where when you put it in there, you see it fry right away and start sizzling right away. That's about the heat that you want. How do you know? Well, you could drop something in there, kind of give you an idea of how hot it is, but um, I'd say another minute or two, and this is going to be hot enough, without a doubt. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, and uh, I do believe this oil is hot enough, so time to panko coat these um, these fish here. I think I'll only cook three the first on the first pass here, and then on the last pass, um, since things always taste better when they're fresh, I will we'll get, cook the last fish. So you just put it in the bag like this, close the top, shake it up until it's covered with that, um, that coating there. And then just drop it in the frying pan. Let's do that one by one. Let's see. Okay, so let's say that we're starting at about 751. That's the biggest one, so we're putting that one in there first. Okay, because it's going to turn 751 any minute. So 754, that's when we're going to take these fish um, and flip them over. And you see how that's sizzling away right there? That's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to put your fish in cold oil. Always heat up your oil before you drop your fish in them. Okay, whoop. Got a little bit of a spot there where it doesn't have panko and that's how you fix that okay and then one more see it's 751 now so 754 do just about right and then the last two fish we could cook those after we eat these ones and they'll be fresher that way because things always taste better when they're fresh okay see that guy there we go. Mm -hmm. Put a little more of the panko right in here. Okay. Put that there to keep the grease from going all over your stove. And what did we say? 754, seven, maybe 755. Let's do 755. That way we'll make sure all of them got their, their uh, three minutes. Uh, Cooking. That's all, that's all you need. They're very, they're a very small, flat fish. Um, there's actually a way that I go about eating these things to get the, the maximum benefit and the maximum amount of fish off those bones. A lot of people are like, how do you eat such a small fish? Well, you got to know what you're doing. And I'm going to show you so that you'll know what you're doing when you catch these fish. And... Usually the response from people is they got a lot of bones in them. Yes, but if you cook them this way and then you eat them the way that I'm going to eat them, you will peel that meat right off those bones and not, you know, not even have to deal with the bones. It won't be that difficult. And you will see. So it's kind of bending up there a little bit. Of course, the tail doesn't need to be cooked as much as uh, the rest of the fish here. Right. 
Got that right over the heat there. Made a little bit of a mess here, but we clean that up later. Okay, these ones are ready to flip. 755, let's flip them. There we go, look at that nice, nice crispy brown. Like that, and flip it over like that. See how none of the skin stuck to the, this is a really good pan. I'm not sure what kind of pan it is, but it is a great pan for frying silver perching because it never rips the skin. You don't want to lose the skin on these guys. That's the best part of this fish. So, let's see. It's a 7.55 plus 3 minutes. We're talking about somewhere around 7.58. And we're taking these off and taking them over to the table and showing you how to eat them. Okay, 7.58, turn the heat off, and these things are ready to come out of the pan. Look at that, huh? That look good? You can see I already got my Tostitos going here. These things. Hint of lime. Got to try them. Mmm. Check that they already got salsa on them. There's the other side. And that is. There we go. It may look like it's a little burnt, but it's not. It's just um, extremely dark. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's not burnt. These are perfectly cooked silver perch. See that? You can hear them sizzling. Here's our fresh salsa from um, Guerrero's Taqueria. Okay. okay. That's what it looks like. This is actually, I guess they have three types of salsa. I believe they make all three of them. This one seems to be the most intricate that has the most visible vegetables in it. The other two seem to be, this one is the mild. This is the mild Guerrero's salsa, house salsa. Then they have a medium salsa and it's a green color. And I'm not sure what's in that one. Actually, I've never even tried it. I'm stuck on the mild. I tried this mild. And then there's also a hot salsa, which is red. So obviously it has tomatoes in it, but it's all pureed it, it like pureed like it's been um you know put into a food processor that kind of thing oh there we go here's our salsa here's the chips i've been telling you about tostitos pink of lime excellent if you haven't tried these yet you gotta try them this is the best tostitos that i've tried so far i haven't tried all of them but uh this one is delicious and that's what you need to do to, um, to eat these. Well, you might want to start by wetting your appetite with a little bit of this delicious salsa. Just right on every ingredient. Tomatoes, white onions, a um, little bit of jalapeno, um, cilantro, and I don't know what else, but they just do it right. Oh, lime juice, obviously. You can never get enough lime, though, when you're eating... When you're eating... Um, salsa. Mm, very good. Okay, so like I was telling you, first... You start with the skin on these guys, and what you do is you take a knife, right? Just run along the dorsal like that. Okay, and usually you can just peel this right off. Hmm, it's not doing that today. Okay, well, let's just eat this like this with the meat on it. You don't have to worry about a pin bone on them. Fish this small, you just crunch them right down, add a little extra crunchiness to it. Nothing is ever the same every time, but if you do this right, you peel the skin off. Here we go. 
Okay. That's a little bit better. But this is tasty. Salmon skin has got nothing on this right here. And this is something that the boat fishermen can't go for because they just sit right there on the surf all the time. So um, the boats can only come in. I don't know how close it is to shore, but they can't get this close to catch these guys. So that's normally what I do. I'm going to get the skin off first, right? And then get the other side. And there's a reason for that, because you want the skin to be nice and crunchy, right? And we're gonna, I'm going to show you something that you do with soy sauce to the meat. Okay, but that's after you eat all the skin. So just run this knife down there like that. You know, all the bones just stick together and just pull them right off. Okay. Now, there we go. There we go. There's the skin. Look at that. This is some of the tastiest stuff in the world. Now you look for the bones right up here. They just come right off. Those are some dorsal fin bones or whatever. All the rest of this is meat. Oh, right down here you got some rib bones. I'm going to pull those off. Don't want to eat rib bones. Pin bones, yeah. Rib bones, no. And there you go. It's crunchy. And delicious. And see, it's not really too much work to eat around the bones on these guys. If you cook it right, like I just showed you, the fish usually comes apart like this. Very easy every time. Now, here's what you do with the meat. Well, here's what I do with it anyways. The tail. Something you just can't do unless you go out there and catch them yourself. And the freshness level, I just caught these a few hours ago. Freshness level is amazing. And this salsa just, just tops it all off. 